Okay, so the next portion of this lecture is going to talk about digitizing an analog image. And so in X-ray, radio waves, and MRI, and sound waves, and ultrasound, all of those signals coming in are in waveform, which means they're in an, an analog signal or an analog form. In order for us to see that on a computer, that has to be converted to a digital image. So there are three steps, three main steps that happen in converting that image from an analog signal to a digital signal. And the first step starts with scanning, and what the scanning does is it divides the image up into the pixels, okay? The second step is sampling, and that's going to actually be taking a measurement um, of each of the pixels so that that can be um, assigned a number. And then in the quantization um, step, that's where the pixels are actually assigned a number. So you can see by this picture, the analog image, this would be waves. Then the sampling is where it's like measuring the pixels that are part of the, um, part of the picture. And then in the quantization, they've actually been assigned a number, a binary code. So, years ago in CT, in 1975, this is what the image looked like. It's very pixely because there's not very many pixels in the matrix, okay? As opposed to 25 years later, where we have a 512 by 512 matrix and you see much, much better um, resolution. Okay, we'll get into CT later. Um, again, the difference between an analog signal and a, di and a digital image. So, an analog image is read by light. It's reading a waveform that comes through. Um, it's a continuous signal. Digital, on the other hand, is very discrete numbers. It's a predetermined number. So anytime you have a piece of paper and you put it into a scanner, the scanner is actually going to scan it, sample it, and then get assign it numbers. And that's the same thing that we're doing with x-rays. So again, here's the three steps. Um, outlined. I'm going to uh, move forward in just a second. Um, the main thing that you need to take away from this slide is in the quantization, the analog to digital converter is actually um, rounding up the numbers as the waveform comes in. Those numbers have to be rounded to a very discrete, precise number. So the analog to digital converter is actually where the conversion of the image happens, and that's in quantization. So we'll look at step one in scanning. So that's that preliminary step. It's scanning the image. You hear this when you make a copy um, in a copier. It actually pre-scans the image, and you hear that. Um, and that's, that's what it's actually doing. It's scanning the image. It's doing a sweep. Um, and so in CR, the reader actually does the scanning. In DR, when you collimate the image, it is, in effect, doing the scanning for you. Okay, so it's just trying to divide the image into pixels to be read. Okay, the sampling portion is where it's actually, there's an instrument that's actually measuring the pixels and measuring the gray scale or the gray level. Okay, so the sampling instrument for CR is round. The sampling instrument used for DR is square. And that's important because in DR, our detectors are square or rectangular. The monitors are rectangular. So you're going to get more detail because the measurement tool used is square also. So it matches all of the pixels, which are also square. Okay, so that's the sampling is just going to um, measure each pixel for their grayscale. The real work happens in the quantization. Okay, so this is the final step, and this is where each pixel is now assigned a binary number, and that is what's going to determine the dynamic range, okay, and um, again, this is where the rounding up or down happens for that uh, digital number, and then this is the function of the analog to digital converter, so it's actually assigning the analog signal a number. Uh, this is just an image that's just showing you the process of what's happening. So the analog to digital converter happens before it goes into your computer, okay? Then in order for you to see it on a monitor, it has to be converted back into um, an analog signal so that it can be projected onto the monitor. So here's my, my analogy I have for the three different steps. 
So the, the sampling, or the scanning, the sampling, and the quantization is like buying a car. The first step whenever you're scanning is you're just looking. You're just looking for the car. You're not sure which one you're going to buy, but you're just looking. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to commit. The second step, which is the sampling, would be like test driving. So now you're going to start to test drive and you're going to measure which car fits you better. Okay? And then the third step, the quantization is now you're committed. You've just bought the car. You've selected it. It's your new car. And this is what you get to take home. Yay. So if you look over here, the analog image is waves, okay? The digital sampling, there's no number. It's just doing the measurement of all the different grayscales. And then in quantization, now all of those grayscales have been assigned a number. So bit depth is all part of, there's bit depth and dynamic range. And those two pieces kind of go hand in hand. And so bit depth is actually... Um, the number of grays that can be stored by the computer, okay? So the human range that we can read is 32 bits, okay? So when you look at um, digital, it has 100 or 1,024 gray levels that can be read as far as the bit depth. It's not as important as the dynamic range in, as far as what we think of. So dynamic range is what's available. So that's the full range that's available. And I'm going to skip. It is the number of uh, gray shades that each pixel represents. So when you look at a wide dynamic range, that gives you more shades of gray. So this image is going to have more shades of gray because we're looking at more of that dynamic range. And probably my favorite slide is this one. So bit depth is going to be the number of steps. Dynamic range is the full length. But what we are looking at in the digital image is what, which piece are we looking at? Are we going to window to this point, this point, or that point? And so, or are you going to look at the full dynamic range? So this is a really good, uh, good way of determining bit depth versus dynamic range.